What up, Instagram? Good morning. I'm gonna take some phone calls uh, with my man here, Aubrey, in the building. What's up, everybody? Good. White t-shirted out. Wow. Always a strong mood. White t- I always <laughs> feel like when I'm, black. Dude, I feel like when I'm at my best and I'm feeling good, like I white t-shirted out. <laughs> All right, start putting in your phone numbers uh, in here. Uh, and uh, why we're doing this is I'm super excited. May second, I will be in Austin, Texas. Sending a link. Are you leaving a link in there? Okay. So you putting in there? But I don't think it's linkable. It's not. It's not. But so they can copy and paste. If they design they can, your life. But, but Just Google that. Yeah, Google. That's what we do. Google. Design your life. Design your life. And a finger. Definitely, definitely, then pull up. Right. There we go. That's it. You're in town for the whole week. I'm in town till Friday. Yeah. Till Friday? Yeah. Nice. What was going on? Uh, podcast, Mark Manson's new book, oh, yeah. which I'm excited to talk to the world about. It's, it's, it's fucking fire. Yeah. Who May 2nd. Is it Adam Grant? Mm-hmm. Did you speak to him? Did you remember? I was in India mm. on a four hour bus ride to Agra. And I was listening to some of your stuff. Nice, nice. All right, put in your phone number right now. Tyler's going to man it. Uh, sorry, Bob. Uh, and call some of the peeps. Uh, but what we're doing here real quick for everybody, May 2nd, Austin, Texas, me and Aubrey Marcus and a bunch of other people. There's some other peeps, right? There's some other people. Yeah. NQ's going to be there on stage with us at the Paramount. We got David Rutherford, former Navy SEAL, coming the next day. We got Emily Fletcher. A meditation teacher, founder of Ziva Meditation. We got a whole fucking Avenger squad. Coming how much? Uh, town. How much are the tickets? You know, uh, like what? Two hundred. Yeah, I think. I think it goes two hundred. Austin, Texas, or in any general vicinity of, or if you're if you can afford a plane ticket, May second, Austin, Texas. I'm looking forward to it. I don't speak in Austin ever, so I'm excited to be in the market. Uh, and right now, uh, for the next fifteen minutes or so, we're going to take some phone calls. So I'm going to have you do that. Oh. Um, I've been good, brother. Really good. Yeah. Always learning. Like surrendering to the process and learning. What's been the most interesting thing in the last couple of months? The, the most interesting thing the last couple of months is really actually understanding that you everything you do, there's often a because. I'm doing this because. I'm doing this because. I'm working hard because. Yeah. But really, if you start to remove the because, that's where the real happiness becomes. Like, gets in, like, I'm just doing this because I'm doing this. Like, I'm doing this because I enjoy it. I'm doing this because of the process. Honestly, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Like, both those words. Yeah. I've been pounding this message for so long. Like, <laughs> and, and I'm starting to go deeper into my own self. I'm like, man, in the summer as a kid, I wanted to shell, to to wash cars. I wanted to sell lemonade. I wanted to mm-hmm. buy baseball cards and sell them. Business, or like that action of the business game, and putting in the work, is my joy. Right. The way meditating, rock climbing, drinking wine, skiing, watching football, playing Fortnite. Like, oh, weird. I do think there's a group of people, and we've never talked about work as a hobby. Yeah. Like I don't hear work as a hobby. Yeah. Like, like I, I devoting can't. yourself to the work because that's what you want to Last be doing. Last night, spending three hours trying to find Sam Darnold rookie cards on eBay, <laughs> sending them to Lou, buying them, studying how rare Prism rookie cards go up. Like four hours of joy. Yep. I, I, I haven't been happier. You know, it's, <laughs> it's so fun for me. Business is my hobby. Going garage sales, right? Like like buying something for $2, selling it for $8. The, the, Business as a hobby is not talked about enough, and it's it's why people who work 14 hours a day love it, because really, they're doing the seven hours of work, and then it's seven hours of hobby, whereas other people are spending those seven hours, you know, doing many, many things that they enjoy, being on the, Tyler loves to play soccer, yeah. right? Like, watching Netflix, like, it's all and the, great. And the reward of the soccer isn't the trophy, it's not the stats, it's not the hardware, it's the playing play. soccer mm-hmm. itself. And mm-hmm. when the stakes are even higher, when you have that big hardware, you play harder so it's more fun. You got a number? Yep. Go ahead. That's uh-huh. exactly right. Business as a hobby is a topic that I need to expand on. We demonize people that, there's a small subculture of people that are like me who are working and we're having this incredible work-life balance conversation, but we're now demonizing people who actually use work as a hobby. Right. 
Right, like as if there's a better way to spend your there's time. There's no better, there's only yours. Yo, what up, bro? You're here with Aubrey Marcus and I. What's your name? Where are you from? Uh, my name is Alex Bradley. I'm from uh, Athens, Georgia. It's awesome, man. Uh, What's thanks, going on? thanks for uh, calling. What can we answer for you? Uh, honestly, I didn't even think I'd get kicked. Um, so, By the way, real quick, uh, before, am... you, before you do anything, everybody on Instagram right now, like, this is what consistently happens. There's this incredible concept of putting your phone number in. We say we're gonna pick somebody and call. Then you get called and you're flabbergasted you got picked and you still don't even have a, like you should all have a question at some level or, or rely on what he's about to do which is you're gonna make it up on the spot but then two days later you're gonna be like, fuck, but I really wanted to ask them. Go ahead, bro. Um, so I am a aspiring chef. Um, I'm in culinary school right now. Um, I'm trying to make a side hustle sharpening knives. Um, where do you think the best, how do you think the best way to approach this is? Well, what, what do you mean? Like you want to get paid for, uh, for sharpening knives? Yeah, uh, going around the, every restaurant, it seems like it's going to be the best uh, way to continually make money on the side. Um, I love this idea. I'm going to give you a tremendous piece of advice that too many people that are ideological and don't actually play in the game push against, but I believe in it the most. You should go sharpen knives for five restaurants for free. For free, okay. Yep, like what? Like I spoke for free for the first 13, for, for no, actually I paid for the first one because that's how it also, for 13 of the first 15 times I ever spoke, I spoke for free, including paying for my flights. And I love that your side hustle is related to your love, passion, love. which is your being a chef, right? So those things are going to go hand in hand. The connections you make while sharpening those knives for free might be the connections you make to get in there and take over the restaurant and be their chef, right? Like you're building yeah. the connections in the field you want and offering a service that people need. So I think it's re really well aligned. Okay. And um, if, if, you know, if you're strategic, like it's one thing to do free work. It's another thing to do free work with heavy strategy. When I do free work, I try to think of two things. How much exposure is it? Like Tyler will tell you, sitting right here, one of the only times I still do free work is if it's massive exposure. There are 49,000 people in the audience. I'm like, eh, it's a lot of exposure. You know, like, <laughs> like it's live on, yeah. you know, it's during the Super Bowl. Like, like I'll pay somebody to put me in a Super Bowl commercial. Right? right. Like when, they, yeah. when, when I get exposure. Or, and that's where I'm at now, in the, for you, when you pick these five restaurants, let it be the biggest restaurants in your 30 mile radius. Let it be the kindest. Let it be somebody who has the biggest Instagram following and maybe like, whether you, you know, you never wanna give with expectation but it's, it's okay to ask. You're like, hey, I'd love to sharpen your knives for free. Uh, and then like you get in there and the vibes are feeling good. Maybe you're like, hey, listen, like, I hope you enjoyed it. Like, wouldn't mind to take a picture from my Instagram, which then makes them say, oh, we'll put you on our Instagram. Like, you can be thoughtful and do it the right way, but if nothing else, if you do it for free for five people, you've established that you do it. Word of mouth is a remarkably fascinating thing. And pick okay. the chefs, pick the chefs that you want to learn from too. Like, pick those people you want to mentor under, not only the exposure, but those people. It probably goes hand in hand but then you might form those connections and those connections can be invaluable. Strategic, yeah. strategic free work is one of the great moves in our society. It really is. Or, and I'm looking at Tyler and Jason because they're living it, or investing in a job that allows you to gain leverage even though you might not be making as much in salary as you may aspire to or think you're worth. Like, People are just not strategic in realizing it's other human beings that dictate the outcome of life. Like there is no job, there is no company, there is no platforms, there's humans that run those things and how you impact those humans and how you build leverage with those humans that run shit matters. That's why you yeah. said pick those shit. Like how do, you yeah, roll, yeah. how do you bring value to the fuckers that run shit? Yeah, and sharpen the fuck out of those knives too. Oh, like, yeah. Kill it. Like, kill it. Make sure you're the best fucking knife sharpener there is. Great point by Aubrey. The amount of people that have gotten into my inner circle have sat right out there. They're now on the cusp, but then aren't here nine months later because they weren't good at their craft or they didn't squeeze the fuck out of their opportunity. That happens too. And I think sharpening the fuck out of those knives really matters. Yeah, and but, you think but, like a, but for whom it matters too, right? Yeah. These things fucking matter. <laughs> yeah. You like you sharpening the fuck out of those knives 
for, for a, uh, a restaurant owner who was just thrilled to get some knives you know, sharpened for free, feels <laughs> yeah. no guilt or has no interest in co-signing yeah. you and it dies in that kitchen that night and nothing happens, also fucking sucks. Yeah. But I will say this, somebody's always watching. So let's play this out. You go and sharpen this, this is why I fully believe in the kitchen. You go to the number three restaurant, sharpen the knife. The owner's a big thing, he's got nothing for you. Don't say it to anybody, doesn't put you on Instagram, doesn't even thank you per- correctly and you're out. But the sous mm-hmm. chef was watching how hard you worked and she in three years opens up the number one fucking spot and now she, and now, do you understand? You Somebody's yeah. always watching. Yeah, and, and things like in this field, like hard work is always appreciated eventually. Look bro, hard fucking work's appreciated everywhere. Hard work is that's the true. cost of, like there's nobody that's ever been successful that made it, that didn't put in hard work. There are people that inherited money like, there are people that have money that didn't work yeah. hard. There's nobody who's made it. They made it. The merit of them making it that didn't put in ridiculous hard work. Mm-hmm. That person does not exist. That yeah. person does not exist. It's also practicing being great, right? Hard work mm-hmm. helps you practice being great at something. That same practice that makes you great at sharpening knives is going to be the same practice that makes you great at being a chef. Practice being great at that, you'll be great at the next thing you do. Aubrey just said something super smart that I never touch on and Tyler's head is falling off his head and I think the reason I know he's shaking his head is Tyler came into working for me as an admin and the hard work that that first 18 months was to calibrate to the speed, to the level of expectations, to being great, he's probably shaking his head because he probably realizes he's better at soccer, he's better at his relationships with his family, he's better at whatever the fuck he's thinking about, FIFA. He's probably better at those things because he's like, oh, okay, wait a minute. If it takes that much to be great here, am I right? Yeah, yeah. And, and realizing the upside of putting in the work mm-hmm. and, and the actual gap that you can cover by actually being like, I'm going to be great at this. Right, like, And the like, dedication like, to the craft like, like, and the upside that can come from it. You're doing more than you did three, two, you're two with, two with me? Two, three. 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 You're doing way more than you did three years ago, but it's easier today than what it yeah, was Yeah, and you have day. the general understanding of if I want that result, this is what I can put in. There's a cost. Yeah. It's like modifying that uh, meme. Let's get to another call. Quote. Thanks for the call, brother. Like, yeah, practice, of course. Thank practice you. being great broadly. Like, know that you're able to be great broadly and you'll see it in all things. You'll see yep. that same path in all things once it's, you understand it's, the concept. It's very funny. We're ta- the world's in a funny place. We care so much about hot happiness and work life balance, which super matters. We've got a lot of great things going on, but there's this new undercurrent, too, about entitlement and things of that nature. It's funny. Like, you know, like you look at, there's people out there, whether it's Kobe, it's definitely what I push. There's people out there are saying, look, you do you, but don't say you're going to be great unless you realize you have to become obsessed. Like you can't be the best at something in the world passively. Yeah. You have to punt everything. Yeah. And that's, and that's, and if you don't want to be the best in the world or a top 100, that's amazing. And like, then you can canoe uh, in the afternoon and like go to a coffee shop and just chill. <laughs> but if you want it, like to me, it's just make your actions map your words. Yeah. You don't need to work on your craft 18 hours a day, but then also don't have the audacity to ever say you're going to be great or all time. It's funny looking back, I was a really good high school basketball player, but knowing what I know now about being great and knowing that that was really the only thing that mattered back then, you know, the grades were fine, I was learning yeah. other things, but... I was like, man, I could have been so much better because I know how to be better mm-hmm. now. Like, I know what it could have yeah. taken. I would have been shooting fucking free throws for like <laughs> 10,000 yeah, yeah. thousands I, I, of I them. I keep telling people, Magic Johnson, two hours before he took the bus at, as a kid. Like, that's what his sisters always tell that story. Larry Bird, like, taking a billion shots in that crickety old, like, that. Like, yeah. it, you, like again, and I'm going to say it again because it's very real to me. Like, when I garage sale, as a hobby on a Saturday and wake up at 5.30 after fucking working super hard and this is supposed to be like rest and this and that. Like that, that four hours of garage selling and negotiating and seeing what's popping and like, I'm working on my craft. Yeah. Let's get to the more. And, like, and there's nothing wrong with not trying to be all time. But use that as the barometer yeah. to like. No, wow. Or know that you don't want to be, thus that's why you should make 67000 a year. Right. Or two or not, or right. not be the best. Hey, it's Gary Vaynerchuk and Aubrey Marcus. How are you? What's your name? Where are you from? 
I am from Austin, Texas. Yeah. So I cannot believe you just called me. <laughs> we called you. Are you coming to our event May 2nd or are you going to break our collective hearts? <laughs> I am trying. Is that a financial thing? Is that a commitment to something else thing? What is it? It is a financial thing. I'm buying you your ticket. Boom. Oh my God. <laughs> Double win already this morning. People are fucking winning out here on this <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Oh my God, so Tyler, crazy. Tyler, we'll get in touch with you and we'll make sure your ticket's set. Oh my God, thank you so much. You're welcome. What's your question? Okay, so um, I started my business about two years ago. I'm um, very familiar with the medical stuff. Yeah. Um, I just started my business about two years ago. I've been dealing with some medical stuff, so it's kind of been on the back end, but I'm trying to pick it back up. Um, I started a part-time job at a comic shop here, and in that, I started a group of artists. Excuse me, because that's what I am. Um, kind of helping local artists get started in the Comic Con uh, circuit. I love everything that you're saying right now. <laughs> um, but that kind of wasn't what I had planned for my business. And Dead I don't really business. know where to take it from there. Um, trying to figure out how to do that as well as build my own business as far as the art and my, my stuff, uh, which is actually a family business. My son and my daughter also are with me. Um, yeah, I'm shaking. I'm sorry. I'm so nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> You're just talking to two um, very attractive men. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just don't really know where to go from here. I kind of feel ADD. Um, I kind of do a little bit of everything. Real quick, uh, real quick. Furniture. Real quick, yeah. real quick. Let's stay there for one half second. Okay. Something that's come up twice this week from friends is they're like, I, they literally use, I feel ADD. I've got so many things. There, there's, this, there's this collective thought out there or there's a certain point of view of like, I'm scattered. I should pick something and go deep. The reason I'm not successful right now is because I've got my hands in too many things. You're talking to somebody who does that. You're talking mm-hmm. to somebody who believes that you should juggle, th- let me phrase, I'm self-aware of what makes me happy and my process is I'm gonna juggle mm-hmm. 39 balls. Yeah. Eight of them are gonna drop, drop. Losses on my resume, letting somebody yeah. down, L's on the, on the record, but that's okay because I have 31 balls in the air. And I think that's better than having two, one ball in the air and you have one, I have 31. I, I put agree 30. with you. So let's stay here. A lot of people's personality traits enjoy tasting a lot of flavors. Just because something hasn't so taken off, that is not necessarily predicated on because you're doing five things. It may be, because maybe you are destined to like be in a place energy, skill, talent-wise, where it's pick one thing, go deep. But we shouldn't just generalize that having too many things is the rationale. Not on top of which, for people like me, Having only one thing and going deep leads to unhappiness. There's a boredom that comes with it. There's a lack of new and fresh and exciting. And so just keep happiness in your process in mind uh, versus actual financial success. I'm being serious here. There's a lot of people who are better off making 83,000 a year and living an $83,000 a year lifestyle, which means not as big Mm -hmm. of a home, not as big of a car, but they're doing they're doing Comic Con and selling honey and, and flipping furniture and they fucking love it. They just, mm-hmm. a lot of this has to do with controlling how much you spend on your life and putting yourself in a happy spot versus some ideological ambition of where your company or how much money you should be making. This is a very important point. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I'm somebody who does a bunch of things as well. Podcasts, author, company running on it, blogs, poetry, all these variety of different things. and. Robert Greene talks about it in his book, Mastery. He calls it the Da Vinci effect. It's like the more different fields you can touch, the more overlap you can create. And Mm -hmm. so it can actually accelerate Mm -hmm. your ability to be excellent at something because you can draw in some of that other information. Mm -hmm. But whatever Mm -hmm. it is, you you just got to push as much as you can into those different things. But understand that it could be a wide variety of those things because everything I do helps the other thing that I'm doing. So it all works together. Thoughts? I'm sorry? Thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I agree with you. I've, I've been struggling with that because I have people around me that are going, you're doing too much, you're putting too much on your plate. Tell I them have, like I said, them. I've been sick for about a year. But tell, I'm them to fucking, I'm tell, like, them to fucking, tell them to fucking worry about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, but I'm serious about this. Like, like one, of the things that, one of the things that I'm most proud of is I put out all sorts of content where I have points of view, right? But they're general. 
I never go to, I never go to, you know this, Tyler, I never go, Aubrey, you should. Like, I never give people one-on-one advice unless I'm answering a question. To jump in and judge from the outside with no knowledge of what's going on in somebody's head or real life, you don't know anybody. Yeah, you're also putting your goals as their goals then, Mm -hmm. right? Because if you don't know any better, then you're not actually listening to what makes them happy, how their process works, what their magic Mm -hmm. might be how this may work out for their life. Like, this is, this is why parents are fucking up every kid. <laughs> Get a stable job, son. Daughter, make sure you do it this way. The fuck are you yeah. talking about? You're, you're teaching me something that was predicated on a framework from 1984. Yeah, my dad yeah. wanted me to work at fucking Goldman Sachs. I would have been a Bond analyst. <laughs> like, that would have sucked. Yeah, you would have been a dick, too. I would have been the worst. You would have been the worst Bond analyst. Been, no, no, I actually think you would have been super successful on Wall Street, yeah. but a dick. <laughs> yeah, I really sure. believe that. It would have not been good for my life no. or the world or anything. No, definitely not for the world. Anyway, mm-hmm. here's what I would say. Keep tasting things. I guess the question is, are you trying to be financially successful? Are we talking in the framework of business here, making money? Um, I mean, yes. And that makes the sense. Bottom line, the artist feel myself that I'm trying to build is really just to help them. You know, I charge a very minimal fee for what I do for them. And so, are you uh, so are you are you trying money. to are you trying to build up that specific business? Is that the literal question here? It seems to be growing on its own. In the last six months, I've signed four artists, and it's just them coming to me saying, "Oh my God, what are you doing?" Like the last one, uh, I signed. He's seventeen. He's amazing, and he was like, "I just whatever you're doing, I want to be a part of it." And so, and that's how it started. Okay, and so what's the question? Like, what, do you want to scale? Like, what's the actual literal question? Yes, I want to scale my business, and I want to, I want to do it in many different facets. I have my own art. I have the the art management that I'm doing for the other artists. Um, I also have been doing decorate cake decorating for 26 years. Like, there's so many things and different creative facets that I do, and I want them all to grow. Are you putting out a ton of content? Like, are you putting I out am- a vlog, a podcast? Like, are you putting out content? No, all of that is in the books. Um, I've been really, really sick this last year, like in and out of the hospital, kind of sick. But now that I'm feeling better, I'm on it. Well, so to that point, here's what I would say. Don't judge yourself. Like, it's remarkable that you're feeling better, and that's fucking number one, two, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because you're not feeling well. uh, None of this shit matters. You know, and so... Do me a favor, a lot of times when people are sick, coming from divorce, coming from a big failure, they feel like they've lost time and they create yeah. this anxiety and lack of patience. The reality is, you just haven't. Like, you've, you've lost more time in the extra hour you should have been not sleeping or th- watching some dumb shit or like pondering in your head or drinking a coffee. Like, people are like, I lost this year. I'm like, dude, you lose a year every year by not squeezing the fuck out of shit. So. Please don't, don't dwell, like this, so many people dwell or look backwards. Nothing that's happened in the past is holding you back from the future. And if anything, it only gives you empathy for these artists who've gone through the same thing, right? Like you can really sympathize, empathize, understand. And if you're going to be an artist management of any sort working with people, they're going to go through their own challenges. Maybe it's a divorce. Maybe it's a death in the family. Maybe it's an illness. But having that experience and using that to build and fortify yourself from it, understanding that this sickness happened for you, not to you, mm-hmm. so that you could get stronger on the other side of it and appreciate life even more because of it. Like you take that attitude, that's just gonna help you help everybody else so much more. We will see you May 2nd. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> email, I'm email very excited, you. thank you e- so much. Email Gary at VaynerMedia.com and Tyler will intercept it and put it in motion. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. May 2nd. Austin, Texas. I will be there. Aubrey's putting on an incredible event. Uh, is it on it? Like sponsored? Like? Yep. Uh, if you haven't checked out on it, you've made a huge mistake. Uh, Aubrey, thank you so much. Yeah, of course, brother. Anything you want to? Anything, anything you want to end with? No, that's it. Check out my podcast, Aubrey Marcus yep. Podcast, on the it. Book. O-N-N-I-T, the book, own the day, own your life. It's about the process. Enjoy it. Just fucking enjoy it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Awesome. Good stuff. <laughs>